Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video we're going to cover the cross court versus the down the line shot in tennis. Now in singles where you position yourself before your opponent makes contact will have a huge impact on the point and of course the match. If I'm out of position, I'm giving my opponent too much space to hit into, this becomes very easy for them to hit winners even if they haven't hit a great shot. Now often when players are just learning how to play singles, they'll stand in the wrong position, they'll be waiting in the wrong position and this will cost them big time because the opponent is able to exploit the space. Even the pros make this same mistake. Here is Monfils hitting his forehand into his opponent's forehand and notice where he recovers into. He's in the middle of the court which gives the opponent a lot of space to work with for this short angle and eventually Monfils breaks down from this running forehand here. And this also happens because players have learned that they have to recover back into the middle. The coaches are teaching them to recover back into the middle. Now you only recover back into the middle in one situation in a tennis point and we'll cover that in this video. Now the foundation of being in position when you're playing singles is being in the middle of your opponent's two best possible shots. Now the best possible shot that your opponent can hit will change depending on where you hit into of course. So if I go cross court my opponent's two best shots will be different than if I go down the line. So it all depends on where I hit into and where I have to recover to. This will determine if I go cross court or down the line. Now when we hit cross court, three things happen. We're playing over the lowest part of the net, we have the most amount of space to hit into, and we also have the least amount of distance to recover. In this point you'll see Roger Federer hitting every single shot cross court. He ends up opening up the court really well and using the width to hit a winner. Oh. So three things were gaining by going cross court. When we go down the line, the major benefit is that the distance that the ball travels from my shot to my opponent's court is uh, reduced so the ball can travel much quicker. So if I hit an aggressive shot down the line, my opponent has much less time than if I hit a, an aggressive shot cross court because the space I hit into is greater on that cross court distance than if I go down the line. So by going down the line, I'm taking time away from my opponent to react to my shot. Now when I hit down the line, I'm risking three major things. The first one is I'm going over the higher part of the net. So the net clearance has to change when I go down the line. The second thing is I'm hitting into less space. So if I time it badly, if I hit it a little bit late, the ball is going to go into a tram line. And the third thing is, because I'm going down the line, the dynamics of the point change and I have to completely change where I'm recovering to. So let's break down the forehand side to begin. If I hit my forehand cross court into my opponent's forehand, their best possible shot becomes this short angle cross court. <laughs> And the reason for that is because they're going cross court they have more space to hit into, it's a higher percentage shot, but also because the ball is moving away from me I have to chase it much further on this side. So this short angle cross court becomes a much harder shot for me to deal with because the ball is always moving away from me. I have to now run off the court to catch that angled shot. So eventually if they hit a good angle I might be 8 or 10 feet off the court trying to hit that shot. If my opponent chooses to go down the line, their best possible shot will be just near the singles uh, sideline. It's impossible for this player to hit a down the line shot that moves away from me unless they're some sort of magician. So their best possible shot will be passing the baseline in line with that single sideline. So in order for me to cover my opponent's best possible shots when I hit into this corner with my forehand, I would recover somewhere around here. So this would be my recovery zone if I've hit my forehand cross court. So I've 
hit my forehand cross and I'd get to around here so that I'm able to cover the short angle and also down the line. Remember the down the line is never moving away from me so I'm not so worried about chasing this ball down. If they hit it down the line and hit a winner I say too good, well played but you're also going for the highest risk shot so I prefer to give them the higher risk shot for them to hit a winner on than for them to go for the short angle and me standing in the middle where they can easily exploit that space on this side. Now the dynamics of the point change dramatically if I choose to hit my forehand down the line. Once I go into my opponent's backhand wing, the angle opens up now for this short angle into my backhand corner. And their best possible shot down the line will be close to the forehand tram line. So their best possible shot now becomes this short angle. And I have to really worry about this if I go down the line. So by going down the line, I've now hit over the highest part of the net. I've hit into the least amount of space but I've also placed myself way out of position because now my recovery will have to be on the backhand side if I want to be able to catch this wide angle. So if I hit that forehand down the line, now I have more space to recover because I have to get to that position rather than the position on the forehand side. So I'm going from here, I've hit my forehand line, and now I have to get to this position in order for me to cover my opponent's angled backhand cross court. not only about where I hit my shot but it's about what my opponent can do off that shot. So this is why most pros will rally cross court because they're going into the safer, the higher percentage shot, they have more space to miss by, they have the lowest part of the net but also the recovery is much less than if they go down the line. Remember it's not only about where the opponent can hit inside the court, it's what happens after that bounce. If they hit that short angle and they hit it really well, I might be chasing it to that second can over there. Whereas if they go down the line, the ball's always gonna stay parallel to the sideline, so it's gonna be easier for me to catch this ball because it's never moving away from me. Now if I hit my forehand cross court and recover into the middle, which is a very common thing players do, what you'll see is that there's a lot of space for the opponent down there to exploit, to use this angle to really take the player off the court. Yes, they can cover the down the line shot much easier, but the angle shot becomes almost impossible to reach if the opponent is smart and recognizes that they're recovering into the middle. So if you do choose to go down the line, you might want to use that higher ball to go down the line so you have the time to move into the correct position. If you're going down the line for a more aggressive option, be aware that yes, if you hit a great shot, it could be a winner or you can force your opponent into an error, but if you don't hit it well, they have all that space to exploit on the other side. Here are some examples of pros going down the line and then being punished for hitting a bad shot down the line, not a good enough quality shot, but also hitting down the line at the wrong time. So here's Monfils, he goes down the line and then Tsitsipas goes back behind him because he has so much space to work with on either side. let's cover the backhand wing. So the same dynamics apply on this side as on the forehand. If I hit my backhand cross court, I'm going for the higher percentage shot. I have more distance to, to hit into. I'm going over the lowest part of the net, but I also have less recovery. So by going cross court with my backhand, I now have to recover just to around here. Once again, my opponent's two best possible shots will be the short angle and then the down the line shot, which is always going to be in line with the singles sideline. If I 
recover into the middle, it gives a lot of space for my opponent to exploit me on this short angle. And I almost want to tease my opponent into going down the line, and if they hit it a couple of times, I say too good. But keep doing it for the whole match, and that will be the difference. If you can play the percentages to your advantage, you're taking away the best possible shot, the highest percentage shot, which is this short angle, and you're giving them the higher risk shot, which is the down the line. If they can keep doing it for the whole match, you just say too good. But most opponents will break down and start missing that down the line if you consistently put pressure on them by being in the right position and by hitting a good quality cross court shot. And if I hit my backhand down the line, the dynamics change once again. So by hitting down the line, I'm now giving my opponent a forehand for the right handers out there that they can then exploit me with, with this short angle. Because it's the forehand wing, it's much easier for them to really rip the ball and get that heavy topspin to create that short angle. So when I go down the line with my backhand, I'm risking more than when I go down the line with my forehand. Because my forehand down the line is into the backhand of most players. So the backhand tends to be weaker. So this short angle becomes a harder shot for them to hit. But if I hit my backhand down the line, I'm going into most players' strength and they can really exploit that space. So if I do hit my backhand down the line, my recovery spot would be on the forehand wing. So I'm going from here, down the line, and now I have to get to here to cover my opponent's angled shot cross court. So when exactly would you go down the line? All of these dynamics that we've just covered on the baseline change massively when you come to the net. Now when I approach the net and come in, my main concern becomes covering my line. So making sure that I don't give too much space to my opponent to pass me on the down the line shot. Where do I stand when I hit my approach shot into the forehand wing? I would come into a position just off center, so it comes somewhere around here. So this position here will allow me to cover the three best possible shots, which is number one, the down the line pass, number two, the short angle pass, and number three, the lob. If I go too close to the net, the lob becomes the easy option for my opponent. So I want to feel like I'm approaching and getting into this position here. From this position, if my opponent hits down the line, I can reach it normally with one step. It might take me two steps, but I can normally reach it with one step, unless they hit a great, great passing shot and it comes very close to the sideline. So with one step, I can go from here, I can cover to around here with one step. If it's extremely wide, I can use two steps. I can go left and right, and I can cover the line with those two steps. Then if they hit the cross court shot, I can do the exact same thing. One step, or if it's really wide, two steps. So I can cover both sides of the court with two steps. Now remember, this all comes down to if I've hit my approach shot into the forehand corner. So if I hit my approach shot into this side of the court, that would be my uh, position that I want to reach before my opponent hits the shot. So this would mean if I'm hitting my approach shot cross court with my forehand, I have to get to that position. And this is exactly why hitting your approach shots cross court becomes less beneficial because you have more space to then recover into to get into a good position. So if I hit my forehand cross, I now have to get to here in the time it takes my ball to go from that forehand to my opponent's strings. So this simply won't work and that's why you'll see the pros approaching mainly down the line. So the backhand down the line when I'm approaching becomes the better option. If I go cross court with my backhand, I now have to change the positioning and I have to get onto the other side. But if I hit my backhand down the line, I'm going from here to here to cover the line and to cover the angled cross court shot. Players will still go cross court sometimes. Now this tends to happen when the opponent has a weaker backhand. So if I have a short ball on my backhand side, there's no reason for me to go down the line into my opponent's strength when I can exploit their weakness by hitting it cross court. Yes, I'm giving them more space to hit into, but also I know that that backhand is weaker 
and they won't tend to pass me so often on that backhand side. Most of the time they'll break down or give me an easier ball that I can simply finish off. So I will approach cross court normally when my opponent has a weaker backhand and I'm using my backhand into their backhand or if I see that there's a lot of space, if I have a short forehand and I see that the opponent's already moving to that backhand side, I'll go for the short angle cross court as the approach shot because the player is out of position. So now if I hit my forehand approach shot down the line, I want to reach a position around there so that I'm able to cover the down the line pass but also cut off the short angle. I also have to worry again about the lob so I'm not closing in too close to the net otherwise that lob becomes an easy option for the opponent. So now that we know all of this it makes much more sense why pros rally mainly cross court and they use it down the line only when they have the upper hand in that rally. So the upper hand might be they've hit the shot cross court two or three times in a row and they've pushed the opponent off into the tram lines and then if you go down the line it becomes a smarter shot because the player is so far off the court there's so much space for you to work with that even if you don't hit a great shot that player's still on the full run. And the other option is going cross court until you get a short ball that you can then approach on with that down the line shot. So next time you're playing, keep these principles in mind and think exactly why am I going cross court? Don't just go cross court for the sake of going cross court. You can go cross court to push your opponent back with high aggressive spin so that eventually they give you a short ball you can then come forward on or you can use the cross court shot to open up the court and exploit the space down the line. Now if you're someone who has great down the line shots anyway and you feel like you can hit winners consistently down the line then keep going for it. But if you're playing bad one day or you have a day where you feel like you're just missing slightly you can always revert back to going cross court building that point with the cross court trading and then going down the line for the more aggressive option. Now if you've enjoyed this video click that like button subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Signing off Simon from TTT all the best and see you soon.